passing off some stuff. <clears throat> so we are going to run into this in a little bit and this. And let's do, 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 do. term. <laughs> let's start with a term. Uh, yeah, there's still pencil. Uh, rather than rolling for some of these, because you may never have heard this word before. So um, does anybody here think they know what a term is? Like if I tell you that that thing has three terms, have you ever heard like those, that kind of phrasing before? Really? Oh, wow. OK. So a term is just like a combination of numbers and letters being multiplied. Is that too scribbly to read? That's my normal writing. I'll try to make it a little neater. Okay, a, a degree. Um, I'll just go right to that one because I don't necessarily expect you've run into this term. A degree is the highest power within a bunch of terms. Standard form means that you are going to write the terms in order from highest power down. I mean, we could say descending, but I know that sometimes it's kind of a word that you have to stop and think about and try to figure out. So it's writing terms in order highest power down. You guys don't listen to the radio on, in the car much at all anymore, do you? Do most of you just listen to your phones? Uh, I always like to bring up leading coefficient because there was this commercial on constantly. I think it was for like a tutoring service or something. I don't know. But they always used to make fun of a leading coefficient because people didn't know what it was. Um, a leading coefficient is the number that's multiplied on the highest term. And it, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. You'll just instantly recognize it when we start talking about it. So these are kind of the four things um, that I wanted to make sure that you guys had written down so that if you run into them somewhere, you'll be able to at least look up what it meant. Uh, classify by degree is the title on that table below. It kind of looks like it's supposed to be a definition or something, but it's, it's just the title. And again, again I'm not really going to call on people for this part because you, w you most likely just wouldn't know it. Okay, so if the highest power is a zero, that's going to be called a constant. Basically, it's a number. And that's because you wouldn't write like x to the zero power. 
x to the zero powers is one. So an example of a constant is just like five, negative two, whatever you want to write. I mean, it's just any number that's by itself. First power, like x to the first power, that's going to be called linear. So an example would be like 3x. It's just when you have a number on an x with no power. Second is called quadratic. And that's uh, when something is squared. So like negative 4x squared. Um, it doesn't have to be an x either. I should stop using that. Um, George, let's go with a g. Is that a good variable? Sure. Yeah, I know. You're like really particular about it. Um, 9g squared. It basically is just when a variable is squared. And when we get to the test, um, we haven't really talked about if we're going to use like a cheat sheet or anything like that yet. I got to imagine we're going to because these two chapters here that we're doing, they've got a lot of little detailed terms like this that I'm not expecting you to just have memorized. Like you kind of learn them if you use them a lot, but otherwise there's a lot of really specific words. Does anybody know the name for third power? <coughs> Yeah, Cl very close, good. It's cubic. I mean, cubed is correct too, but cubic is just like the description version of the same word. Um, nine y cubed. Oh, I just did nine. We'll make that a 19. It's definitely a different one. Quartic? Wait, is it quartic or quartic? You want to Google it? I feel like there's no. I, what? what? I thought you were going to look it up. Oh, it looked like you were being nice. Pick up your phone to look it up. Let's see if that's spelled right. I'm pretty sure it is. Fourth and fifth power have very close words, and they're not even terms you use that often. Yeah. Spelled right? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So quartic and quintic. Mm, I'm not really expecting you to use it. Um, for the most part, up to cubic is pretty commonly known because those are the com most commonly used things. Um, quartic and quintic just uh, don't get used that often. Um, let's let's have a good number. Lexi, what's a good number? 11. 11 x to the fourth. Good, good, good. Bailey, you look uh, asleep. What's a good number for quintic? 12? Very imaginative. Go from 11 to 12. Thank you. So negative 12, uh, we'll go with a B for Bailey. Six or more is actually kind of annoying. They call this the nth degree, where n is a number. So uh, eighth degree. Basically, there are specific words for six or higher, but they're used so seldom that nobody ever uses them. So. Uh, they basically just start calling it the, with the number. And I, I kind of prefer that myself. Uh, honestly, I'm usually going to say like fourth degree or fifth degree too. OK, classify by number of terms. If you only have one term, it's called a monomial. Uh, you'll notice up above, I only wrote single terms every single time. 
I didn't write like a whole equation of things. So when you have multiple different types of terms together, they, they have a name for them. So if it's just a single one, those are called monomials. So it could be just a number. It could be, you know, an x squared. It doesn't matter which type it is. A term is just a combination of a number and a letter together. That's, that's the definition we wrote right above it. Two terms is called binomial. And that would, a common one is something like 3x plus 2. Um, we could have uh, negative 5x minus 6. Those are two terms when you put them together. Uh, I guarantee somebody can guess the third with three terms, trinomial, yep. So x squared plus 3x minus 6, um, 9x cubed plus x squared minus 2. Sure. Those are both trinomials because they have three terms. Uh, let's roll for the first person now, finally. One? Really? Oh, wow. Well. I can't even see back there. Absolutely. Uh, Natalie, what... I don't know if it's obvious or not, so that's why I guess I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm going to ask it anyway. What's between every single term? Wait, can you even see from the back? <coughs> well, why, did, why didn't she have to move? <laughs> We've got open seats towards the front, too, you know. Uh, OK, can anybody help her out? What's between every single term? No, that's the names of them. So on the right-hand side, the examples. What's between every term? No, the, the commas to separate the examples. So plus and minus signs? Do you want me to go over what a term is like when they're written out like that? Sure. OK, I'll do that. Um, let's, I guess let's write down the four or more first, but I, I'll definitely go over that then. Okay, so if you have four or more terms, they just call it a polynomial. Poly just means any number of sides. Um, let's go with 2x to the sixth plus 9x cubed. I'm just putting random things in here, minus 11x squared plus 6. OK. So if it isn't obvious to you, then that's OK if it's not. This would be one term. This would be a second term, third term, fourth term. So every single term is made up of a number and a letter combo. And it doesn't have to have both of them. It could be just a number. It could be just a letter. But every single term will always be separated by plus or minus signs. So if you're having trouble counting, um, you basically just count how many plus or minus signs there are, and it's always going to be like one more than that. Step E R A R A R E R. I knew that for sure. I knew that. Separated. That looks right. Every term is separated by a plus or minus.
Now, eventually, the way these are going to be used is you'll see something written down, and you'll be able to give it a name. Okay. So, do you want me? To, I'll do an example of that, even though it's not in your packet. So, if you want to write it down somewhere, you certainly can. Uh, let's do Heidi. Give me a number. Seven x squared. Yeah, keep going. Three minus three x. Thirteen. These are good numbers. Okay, so we've got a thing written up here, and it's going to have two. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. It's going to have two different names. One name is the highest power that's there. Another name is going to be how many terms. Okay? So if I'm looking at this, I'm going to look for the highest power. Two. Uh, I guess well, suppose we should roll it instead of me just calling on people. Yeah, see, that did that to me too. It just fell at the bottom. 30? Oh, it's empty. It's like over there, isn't it? That's you. Okay, what's the highest power you see there? Okay, so on your list, what's going to be the name if second is the highest power? Perfect. So that's going to be one of the names that we can classify it as. Quad I don't know, margins. You, I've seen you guys doodle in microscopic spaces on tests. I know you guys know how to write margins. OK, another person. 11. 11. Uh, I think that's 9, 10, 11. Are you feeling up to it? OK. 20. <coughs> George, you get rolled almost every day. Um, how many terms are there? Three, because there's two plus and minus signs. So three terms is called? Trinomial. Trinomial. Nice job. So if we classify it as a quadratic trinomial, that's supposed to tell you that the highest power is the second power and that there are three terms. That, that's kind of how they're going to be using the names as you go forward. And you'll just be gradually like, adjusted to it. It's not something where I'm just going to immediately like, spot on, give you a name and tell you to go write an answer for it up there or something like that. It's just so that you get used to the naming system. Okay. Let's, let's go to the actual page then, so you guys don't have to write in the margins anymore. <clears throat> um, sure. Four. Four. Is that Anna? Okay. Um, if I look at the top on these three examples, 3x plus 5x is 8x. 7x squared plus 3x squared is 10x squared. And then the third example is kind of a combo. 4x cubed plus 7x cubed plus 8x gives you 11x cubed plus 8x. Um, how should I phrase this question? Do you, I mean, do you know what I'm trying to ask? If I look at that third example, how come I didn't put together the 8 with the 11? That, that's kind of what you're supposed to get out of seeing that example. That's perfect. That's, that's perfect. So when you're adding and subtracting things, you can only add and subtract, they call them like terms. So you can only add and subtract same power letter combos. I don't, should we write that in the rules? Does that help to write them down like that? Wow, you guys are so full of helpful feedback every day. 
I should, I should keep a log book of the days you actually do give feedback on something. I feel like we should have like rewards or like a reward party on those days. No? Okay. Elena, should we write down these things or not? Do you guys like just hearing them or do you like writing them down so you can look them up later? Hearing them is fine for you. Okay. So should we skip that? Okay. When you add and subtract, it can only be with like powers. I just want to go straight to doing the examples. Uh, you only add and subtract the numbers in the front. Yes, a power would be the exponent. Oh, you know what? This wasn't one of our definitions. Didn't even realize that. Every single number multiplier in the front is called a coefficient. We had a leading coefficient, but a leading coefficient would be the number that's on the highest power. So like this 11 is called a leading coefficient. But every single number multiplier in the front is called a coefficient. Coefficient. So what I was going to say to you until I realized I had, we hadn't talked about coefficients, you only add the numbers in the front. So you only add the coefficients. So like when I... This 7x squared plus 3x squared, when I look at this, in my head, I say 7 of the x squareds plus 3 of the x squareds. So they're both, x squareds is just kind of like the, the thing you're adding, I guess. Like if, like let's go back to like first grade. You guys always talked about like apples and oranges, right? If I have seven apples and three apples, I would have 10 apples. The apples is like the x squared. That's what you're counting up. So a coefficient tells you how many of something. OK, way down at the bottom. A36? What are you? What? This is messed up. You're 35? Well, is somebody just claiming not to be 36? Is it empty? What number is yours? Why didn't you? I was looking all over for 36. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll kind of lead you on this. So first thing I'm looking at on this negative 3x plus 12 plus 9x squared plus 2x minus 18, I have parentheses around two groups. The only reason those parentheses are there is to tell you that those things are grouped together, but there's nothing outside the parentheses to multiply. So like in this situation, the parentheses don't do anything. So if, you, if it helps you, you can certainly rewrite this without parentheses. You don't need to. But on this situation, the parentheses don't do anything. They're just kind of telling you how they were originally grouped together. OK. Do you have a preference how we want to go through this? OK. So first thing I usually do is I usually look for the highest power. So what's the highest power in that whole thing? 2, so the 9x squared. So I'm going to write the 9x squared first. 
And some of you like to do this step in your head. Some of you will need to write it down. It won't matter. I am absolutely OK if you do this step in your head. I just want to show you a method for writing it down as well. OK, so then we, I'll cross that one out because we used it. OK, what's the next power down? Is that an easy enough way to ask? Um, so the regular x's are like x to the first. So regular x is going to be the next power down. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to write negative 3x plus 2x. And you've got to keep the symbol that's in front of it. So minus 3x plus 2x. And I'm, I'm going to kind of color code it for you guys just to show you how to put them together. But, you know, obviously that's not something you're going to need to do. Um, OK, Sam, and then what are the last two things that are left? OK, um, if you can, make sure to list them with the symbol in front. So like I would say a plus 12 and a minus 18. But good. OK? Do you want to be done with your turn? OK, let's go to the next person. So again, some of you guys will do this step mentally, where you're just going to like look for certain powers that are the same and then just add them or subtract them together in your head. Nine? Nine? OK. Uh, nobody. 33. 33? Uh, it's got to be somewhere. OK, Mikey? <clears throat> Did it, I don't know if it helped the way I wrote it out here with the colors. OK, so the 9x squared does not have another one to combine it with. So that's going to stay 9x squared in the final answer. What? You will definitely have. Everybody usually forgets it year to year, so that's why I'm going slow. You definitely have, you've combined like terms before for sure. Because um, you guys did a lot of factoring, if I remember right, right? Yeah. So that would be part of that. OK, what do I do with the, the <clears throat> minus 3x plus 2x? Perfect. So you just add the numbers in the front. I'm, I'm kind of emphasizing this right now, because when we get to multiplying next, I don't want it to feel confusing in your head that we do things differently. OK, and then the last one, negative 6. So plus 12 minus 18 is negative 6. And then maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't. Remember when I said I usually start with the highest power first? That's so that my answer is automatically in standard form. It's not wrong if your answers are written in different order. But you'll always see them written down in order, like when you look at answer keys, multiple choice, whatever. So standard form is just kind of the, <clears throat> the normal thing. OK, we probably don't need to do this whole setup on the next one, is my guess. This was just me basically explaining how we go through it in your head, whatever. OK, I saw you have somebody rolled already. Uh, six. six. I think you're six, aren't you, Josiah? Do you think you could help me with this uh, problem on the right, the 9x4 plus x cubed plus 2x4 plus 6x cubed minus 8x4 plus x cubed? It's a lot of stuff. OK, do you want me to guide you through it a little bit? Yes? OK, so what's the highest power that you see? Four. OK, so I'm going to basically either literally underline or mentally look for them. I'm going to find all of the different fourth powered terms. And in this case, there are three of them. Now, I don't need these parentheses because there, everything's just being added, like we're not multiplying out anything. So what do I get if I combine all three of these? So 9 plus, yep, uh, wait, no, what'd you say? So 9 plus 2 gives me 11 minus 8 
that would give you 3. So we'd have 3x to the fourth. And then you go look for the next power down, so cubed. So I see 1 right there, 6 right there, 1 right there. So 8. So I'm going to have positive 8x cubed. There are no other terms, so I don't need to keep looking I don't need to look for a squared term because we've used them all up already. But otherwise, you would just keep going down with the power and in your head look for those terms. And, and pretty soon, you guys will most likely just be adding these in your head and then writing the answer directly. But if you need to organize it like I've kind of been doing up here, go for it. Does this sort of make sense? Are we feeling OK about the topic for right now? Excellent. Um, Riley, let's give you the job today then. So on the back wall there, it should be 12.2. I think, yeah, like right directly behind you, I believe. Now my guess is this worksheet is going to take you five minutes. Because adding and subtracting is probably something you're feeling pretty comfortable with and is going to go pretty quickly. Do you want to hand it out? Thanks. So this is, this is kind of what I have set up for today. We've still got 20 minutes left. And I, I don't think you're going to need 20 minutes to get it done. But if you don't finish, I mean, just basically turn in whatever you get done today. Like if this is going kind of slow for you, just get whatever you can done today, and that's fine. Um, and then tomorrow, we're, we're kind of like combining onto this. It's subtraction instead of addition, even though we're like still subtracting. Yes, I have it. I have it up there. Oh, that's fine. If you don't get done today, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, I usually just try to assign things that'll take you during class. 